I do feel like the future is sustainability eco-friendly so I think eventually this is going to be a necessity. My name is Jessica Unsel, also known as Wildfire Water and I'm a natural dyer. I am a fashion designer by trade so I have a full-time fashion design job and a natural dyer on the side. My passion for natural dye really started in 2016 when my youngest daughter was born. Um, I noticed that there was just like not a lot of options for naturally dyed blankets, naturally dyed clothes, um, even natural toys. I just felt there was a huge hole in the market for that kind of thing. Um, so I started dyeing stuff for her to begin with and started selling um, like little baby loveys that were naturally dyed. And then um, I really dove into it. Um, 2018 is when I really started taking workshops and just learning and just doing natural, only naturally dyed stuff basically in my store, um, in my Etsy shop. I took you guys outside to my natural dye garden and I'm gonna cut a couple flowers so you can see some examples. Okay, this is Black Knight Scabiosa and it is a natural dye flower. Makes like a purple to teal color. This one is Tall Plain Coreopsis. This is actually a wildflower that grows pretty commonly in the south. It's got nice tall stems and the entire thing gives um, an orange color, even the stems and the leaves. This is also a Coreopsis, but this is Sunfire Coreopsis. So it has more of an orange color um, and it prints almost red on fabric. And then this is Sulfur Cosmos, and it's a beautiful orange flower, and it prints this neon orange on fabric as well. So that's just a little stint bit of what I have growing in my garden. I also have marigold, uh, black hollyhock, and roses growing as well. And that's not the only dye flowers that you can grow. There's actually a few more um, I don't have growing here, but you can grow additional dye flowers. These aren't the only ones. Um, also, these grow nationwide, so you don't have to live in California to grow these. You can look up what climate you're in and see what flowers might be good for you, but many of these will grow in the summer throughout the United States. And we're going to be doing bundle dyeing with flowers. Mm -hmm. result of our bundle dyeing with flowers on a silk scarf. You can see we got some really cool colors and textures in here. This is a technique that I use a lot on clothes and blankets um, in my shop and it is essentially, as you can see here, the flower printed onto the fabric. So what I do is I take the flowers from my garden Fresh is best, but you can also sprinkle dried flowers if you want. And you literally put the flowers face down onto the fabric, and then it's rolled up into a really tight little, they call it bundle, that's why it's called a bundle dye, a really tight little cinnamon roll looking bundle, and then you steam it, and that helps to pull the pigment out of the plant stuff and adhere it to the item that you're dyeing. Now something really important to note, which is probably one of my most asked questions, is um, so you just steam it up and that's it. <laughs> it's a little bit more involved than that because the fabric goes through a pretreatment process. So I scour the item first, which means I'm cleaning it, getting rid of all the oils and dirt, and then I mordant it. So I use aluminum acetate and tannin in combination to do a mordant, which is like a pre-treatment that allows the natural dye to stick to the garment. The one thing that I want to remind people is that even though natural dye is a craft in itself, you can use natural dyes in your craft. So if you're a weaver or you crochet or you're a sewer or you're a painter or a jewelry maker, you can incorporate natural dyes into your items. So if you're a painter, you can actually make natural dye pigment or you can even purchase pigment from another 
dyer and you can use these to make watercolors. So if you're a painter, you can use this. Um, here's some examples of some wood pieces that I did for a jewelry maker to make earrings with. So you could use naturally dyed wood. Um, if you're a doll maker or sewist, you could purchase naturally dyed fabrics and use them in your craft. So it's super cool because it branches across many other crafts and you could add like a sustainability and natural aspect to your craft by using natural dyes. So I hope you guys really enjoyed. Thank you so much for coming. You can put your questions in the comments below. Thank you again.